and uh, thank you for the Transforming Edu organizers for having us here. So I'm going to introduce Gonzalo, please, uh, to come to the stage. Gonzalo comes from the Tech de Monterrey, one of the most prestigious universities in Mexico. And what we're going to try to do is talk about the global view of education. Definitely, education has the same problems around the world. So this whole day has been focused around what is going on mostly in the US and in the global consumer market. What I'm trying to do is give you a perspective of what, what is happening around the world. To do that, basically, education is being discussed everywhere in the same type of content. We are all struggling with how much investment is coming into education for the first time, how many new firms are dis disrupting innovation, are coming up with new technologies. But basically, we are facing a global learning environment. The same students that used to have one single point of contact to get all of their content, all of their information, all of their knowledge, and the same schools that were designed around the principle of somebody that owned the content and delivered the content is gone. And this discussion is happening everywhere. Because of my job, I am fortunate enough to be participating in over 30 countries with schools, universities, and in events like this around technology. And everybody is discussing the new generation and how the new students around the world are evolving. There's major differences, though, within the US and the development countries and the emerging or underdevelopment countries. And what I'm going to try to focus on is the idea that there's a lot of innovation coming from the emerging countries that has to be seen. The whole idea of us sponsoring the event and being part of CES is to give visibility of the words of hundreds of entrepreneurs around the world. And my job today is an ambassador of these hundreds of entrepreneurs that are really developing tools that are going to change education, but from a different perspective the perspective of limitations, the perspective of not everybody has a cellular phone, not everybody went to school, not, everybody, not everybody's parents are helping them, not everybody goes to school taking four-hour buses. So what happens in the emerging countries is driving innovation in education, and this is the idea of this discussion. We are all struggling with this virtual reality and who's the kid of the future and what's the real personality between being online and live in the school. We're all discussing this idea of multiple screens, what is happening. We're all discussing the major challenge of engaging the students. So all of these things that have been talked about through this whole day are global in nature. This is not a US problem. This is not a Germany problem. This is not a development country problem. This is a global problem. So basically, you know, when you look at engaging as the major challenge for education, when you see the brain activity that is happening in education, we have to develop new engaging solutions to solve this. So this is a kid that I was following up in Washington at the National Geographic Museum. And I, this kid caught my attention because how independent he was from his parents. His parents were following him, following him around because he was so engaged. And he would sit anywhere, grab an audio, and begin listening to the explanation of what was happening. So this is what we're all aiming to, to achieve, engaging students to that sort of level. So one of the key elements that make it different between the developed countries and the under, underdeveloped countries is this relevancy. The amount of problems that we have in poverty, inequality, access to technology, water, vulnerability, women, outside of the developed countries is amazing. So how do we educate kids for the next generation that they learn how to take, up, take care about the, the planet, how they learn to integrate women into the workforce, into the world, how they learn to solve poverty, 
These are items that have not been talked about in this event and are relevant for education to be solved. So this whole idea that education is not happening anymore in one stage of your life, that we're going to have generations that are going to live 100 years, and we're going to have to develop lifelong learning programs. This is something that we should be focused on to develop new technologies. So again, we're at this point where education and the internet are the great equalizers. And when we come at CES, and we look at all of the new developments, and we look about all the new technologies that are coming to the world, we need to think about the poor children in Brazil, in Bolivia, in Chile, in Peru, that never have access to that. Their parents don't know that this is happening. And CES is so far away that we need to do something about it. And this is my message to you. Technology needs to integrate those kids also. They need to think about a specific women problem around the world. How to bring about the women that are totally neglected in these countries to have the same opportunities as men. Fortunately, there are global heroes in education who are women, teenagers from underdeveloped countries. This is great news for education. So, in facing these challenges, Tech de Monterrey, Cengage, we decided to work together in connecting the productivity with learning, new technology with learning, edupreneurs with learning. We decided to bring this together for the kids in Mexico and elsewhere around the world. So if we were doing this right, the education model should not be preparing our kids for this type of work. Otherwise, we would not have the amount of unemployment that we have today. And at the same time, we have companies that are not able to capture the talent in these countries because they are not prepared. So my message here and the idea of CES, let's open up a discussion around inequality, vulnerability, kids that are not in CES, and how do we develop technologies to do something about it. So the first problem that we need to attack is actually English. Because we don't speak English, we have an accent. We don't speak English, we need English, because if we don't have the ability to connect to English, we are lost in the world. It used to be 10 years ago that learning English was to come to Las Vegas, go to Disney, or visit the Big Ben. And you had to learn English to speak with a native. Today, 80% of the English conversations are happening between people that are not nat natives. So English is very important. Whomever develops a technology that allows countries that do not speak English to get literal on English fast, massive, that would be a major solution for our world. So this is the example. This is the president of Colombia launching their major concern, Colombia bilingual. How do we get 100% of children learning English in the next 10 years? How do we make them learn English without losing another generation? English not to travel, not to the elite, English to have a voice in the world. So there is no way we can continue to improve learning on a linear path. The only way to improve learning around the world is by exponential growth. And exponential growth can only happen if we take a look at the vulnerabilities around the world. So we are all discussing the future skills, the skills of the 21st century. We're all dis discussing the future of technology. We're all dis discussing the new type of work. But we need to integrate the reality of these problems into our technologies. One of the things that we're doing is we recently acquired Pathbright, a company that basically provides an e-portfolio of skills so children can 
demonstrate their skills, and students can demonstrate this, their skills. And we're going to talk about it with, with the experience of, of Tech Monterey as well. So I'm going to spend a few minutes to share with you what we've done to promote the Edupreneurs movement. And the panel that happened you know, right before us, or the one uh, before the right before us, discussing the Edupreneurs in the US, what we began doing was promote this idea that in order to get educational problems solved, we needed more people focused at new technologies in education. And this got a lot of attention around the world. We started talking about building the first global entrepreneurs movement. And with that, linking technologies with real universities, with real problems, solving the most vulnerable needs of our region. So what we did is we created a network of accelerators exclusively focused at education. With this network, we partnered with Learn Lounge in Boston. We partnered with Mindset in Tel Aviv and other players in London and in San Francisco to bring accelerator capabilities into Latin America. I spend one day a month talking to entrepreneurs around the world, explaining to them what are the key challenges that they need to integrate English, first generation students, women, rural communities, all of these. So whatever technologies they are developing, how do they serve these communities? How do they change the world by not only looking at the elites, but looking at the most vulnerable students. This is a contest that we did, a global contest of, of entrepreneurs. And you see companies from Japan doing educational innovation, Israel doing educational innovation, India doing educational innovation. We had 300 companies, entrepreneurs, in this contest. You had France. UK, USA, and the winner, a company from Kenya. The runner-up, a company from Colombia. Education technology is not going to be transformed in the developed countries. Most likely, the best ideas are going to come from the underdeveloped. Finally, if we are going to think about a new system, we have to move away from thinking that education is the tree of life. Everybody learns the same thing at the same pace. It's evaluated under the same system for the same knowledge delivered the same way. The new educational system looks like, looks like this. It's a live network of nodes that connect. Why is Tech de Monterey connected to Sengage? It's connected to the students, it's connected to the community, to build a new system of learning, which is not structured. It integrates formal learning with informal learning. And the teacher needs to evolve to become a curator. They are not the owners of, of the content anymore. So in our work, we decided that we needed an image of the 21st century student. And we went out and we partnered with National Geographic because the 21st century student is pretty much the National Geographic Explorer. Many of the skills that are needed around the world are found in these freelance professionals, photographers, researchers, explorers, that we're bringing into education. The next thing we did is we partnered with TED because the 21st century student has to resemble the TED speakers. And in that work, I began interviewing TED speakers to see what we could do to match the educational profile of these consolidated speakers and bring them to the kid down in Chihuahua. This is my friend Eduardo Reutemann, 
the curator of the Museum of Israel. What is the curator resemblance to the teacher? How does a curator in a museum can transform the, ro the role of a teacher? This is a discussion that we're having with many curators from TED, from Smithsonian, from National Geographic, to make sure that we at least have a vision, because we all know that we need to transform ourselves, but we don't know where. So we decided, you know, we didn't know where, we decided let's look at National Geographic for the students, a TED, and a curator for the teachers to begin this transformation. And I'm gonna share with you a recent trip to Israel so we can bring to Transforming Ed, Ed you this global view of what is happening. I spent 10 days in Israel reviewing the Maccabi movement, the sports movement from the Jews community that has been for 100, for 100 years and it has 500,000 students around the world in a community. How do we leverage an organization that is global in nature and it's able to understand the 21st century students. Then I went to a school that is called the Second Chance School. The Second Chance School takes children that were damaged by the war, that didn't have parents, and they help them be, become successful. And it's specialized in these children that need attention, that they could not succeed in the normal school. Then I went to this school that integrates Arabs with Israelis to see how the cultural integration is learned. How do you create a global student that is able to be culturally savvy? And then I went to this school that is underground, prepared for bombs. So the, the classroom does not stop even at war times. These classrooms exist in Israel because they are ready to keep the class going even if there's a bomb outside. So this type of thought really made me change my educational view to think about the vulnerabilities together with the technologies to solve the real problems of, the, of education. These are labs that are shared between cities. So not every school can have all the labs all the equipment, so they have one lab for the whole city, and all the schools and all the students go to that lab to use the most sophisticated equipment. I met with President Shimon Perez to discuss how, what was his view on education for peace? How do we develop a consciousness? The next generation cannot make the same mistakes our generation made. Mistakes for women, for the planet, for the religion beliefs, or war. And I had a conference with all of the entrepreneurs in Israel together with a very global panel of people that are interested in, edu in transforming education around the world. So if I'm, if I'm able to open your eyes to say, you know, let's think about education globally, Let's think about vulnerabilities and partnerships. So this is the Weizmann Institute of uh, Technology, basically developing scientists, and even, you know, this, this guy is, is probably going to win the next Nobel Prize on biotechnology, and it's an Arab that has been coached by the Israeli Weizmann Institute. So I'm gonna close up and tell you how all of these international global discussions are being discussed at Tech de Monterrey and are being integrated. Tech de Monterrey is probably one of the most sophisticated areas of institutions of, of, of knowledge in Latin America. And they developed a strategic plan, 2020. Gonzalo here is responsible for analyzing technologies and helping academics integrate new technologies into their educational space. So I'm gonna skip over a few slides so we can go faster, but we have a strategic program between Cengage and Tech de Monterey to look at how do we change the teachers into curators, how do we create English for all, how do we 
you know, develop this entrepreneurship mindset and so on. So I'm not gonna stop into that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Tecnologico de Monterrey, Tech de Monterrey, and then I'm gonna let Gonzalo uh, speak about how he's bringing together all of these ideas into Tech de Monterrey. Tech de Monterrey is a huge organization, 31 campi around Mexico. Uh, they have 16 offices around the world, and they are basically focused at building the entrepreneurship mentality for Mexico, which is very much needed. They have 54 major degrees. They even have high schools. And you can see their whole educational offerings. So I'm going to just skip a little bit, but Tech de Monterrey has been regarded as one of the top business schools in Latin America. Gonzalo, I'm going to let you uh, go into the presentation. I'm going to skip this so you can talk about the educational model and show us some of the examples. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, nice to meet you. I try to explain uh, fast <laughs> some projects in the Tech de Monterrey about the innovation. The first step for Tech de Monterrey three years ago launched the new educational model. This educational model was for close the real world between university. That is what the world need for the new jobs and the millennials inside the university. This educational model had uh, three principal uh, topics. The first is uh, flexible. We need to create the new leadership for tomorrow. We need to create new competence for the, this uh, moment. Maybe now different competence for the future. I don't know. What is, what is this competence? Then this uh, educational model is about challenge. When say challenge is the students go to the companies in one week for create new projects and maybe the company in the semester or in one week. We depend because this project is very important for us because for the final score, is no, it's important in the exams inside the classroom. The most important is the challenge. And this is very, very important for us. For support this educational model, we create open flexible uh, learning space. This space is like an innovation gym. All students, by different uh, disciplines, sharing and the knowledge between the teacher. But these teachers know is the traditional teacher, is the best teacher around the Tech de Monterrey. It's like a coach or like a mentor, and we try to get more teachers around the world inside the, this innovation gym, because the students need to create new ways for learning. This space is, is important for us. The other space is a center for teaching and learning. This space is for the teacher. The teachers try to move the new model for teachers using new technology. This space, inside of this space, we create fab labs and a space maker when the teacher try to test the new model. For example, inside of this center, we create the a space for drones. 
like uh, Coliseum drums. The teacher go to the space and they test the drums and try to create new model for the teacher. And the students create new different ways for demonstrate the new competence. This is the pictures in the center. This is a video about one teacher create the new project inside of these centers. Can you? Okay. This project is important because try to solution two ways. Math and motion has been created as the an space option to review some and the other trends algebra, is about geometry online and courses. Geometry it's free. Contents. This, this teacher create the content and put an inside the Coursera. We partner the Coursera. To talk about and this content is open for everybody. This is about the a list of topics how to create content in different ways. This uh, professor cubic and win the, the fifth one in Latin Finally, America about the different way for explain math. It's a big project because inside of these centers functions. for teaching and learning, the professor tests the different iPads and drones and uh, virtual reality and different immersive uh, content we use like, uh, software, you know what is the Google, Google Lair? The Google Lair have uh, the project like Liquid watch. Galaxy. This project is a uh, 3D world. And this center have one when the teacher testing this, in order this to type the project. And promote mathematical thinking. The other big project is about Semana I. Semana I is the most important project for Tech de Monterrey because in one week, all students go outside the classroom and they get the process about new uh, methodologies about what learn the competencies. This is a statistic in this project. It's an amazing project. Yo soy Ramón Richi, soy el SMD es y esto es la semana I desde el Campus students. Toluca. Querétaro. Santa Fe, Ciudad Juárez, Ciudad de okay. México. Hidalgo. Estado de México. The other project is about observatory. The Tec de, Mon the Tec de Monterrey have a team for identify different trends about innovation technology and educational technologies. This products is for the teachers and the leadership inside the Tech de Monterrey. I have many papers in, outside in, you, for you, it's for free. These some trends are reports, it's, it's free. This is the site, observatorieedu.com. You can download this uh, PDF. It's about what trends happening in the Tech de Monterrey in the world. Okay, this is the other project is the MOOCs. The other project is about the tech tools. The big issue in the university, in the, in the Tech de Monterrey, the Tech de Monterrey have 9,000 professors. And it's the first time that this professor about tech tool sharing what projects in this moment uh, using inside the classroom or in classroom. This project is very important because we can escalate the knowledge inside the Tech de Monterrey. I, I know, I know yeah. that we are of time, so we probably, I don't know yes. if we have time for, for any questions, but we'd like to thank you for your, your attention and hopefully this was of, of value for you guys.